All right. So back in the next hour, we are uh, we had a question from uh, Fede here. I hope I pronounced that decently correct. Yeah, yeah, um, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so the I'm gonna open up the issue here in my screen share. Um, here, so the main. Uh, let's see. This should, yeah. So the I opened an issue here about the purity of Nix and how there's what the different kinds of purity are, pure, what the different kinds of purities are, um, and he replied here with apparently a problem rela relating to NixOS. Um, uh, let's quickly take a look at that. I'm not sure how much I can help here on the spot. These issues might be pretty um, specific to the packages you run and so on, uh, but I'll we can take a brief look. Um, so, uh -huh. so we have a Nexus uh, flag here, packages default package. Um, a, yeah. oh, a build FHS user environment. Yeah. And then, so I guess maybe I, I should uh, clarify a little bit uh, how this application is, is running. It's a, so it's a remote desktop uh, application and it's a little bit uh, peculiar, at least um, from my perspective, I've not seen many applications working like this. But the thing is uh, you log, you log, uh, uh, you get a, a, a launcher, yeah, that program, ETX launcher, that you have to install on your local machine. That's a binary, and I, I patched that with uh, patch elf. I, I think uh, there is the, an automated procedure or something uh, like this. I don't remember exactly about that. But basically, the way you use yeah. it is you log into a web page and you start a session then the session will call that launcher. Then the launcher does some handshaking with the server. It downloads another binary that it then uses to run the remote de desktop uh, uh, application. And the thing is that I try to you know, modify the binary and patching it in the same way that I patched the launcher, but it detects that this I tampered with it and it won't start it, it oh. will replace it with the original one. So for that reason, I, I created the environment and I'm starting Firefox uh, inside that environment. And then, uh, and then, well, that binary picks up the environment and, uh, and it was running fine with uh, NixOS 2111 and 2205. But then I, I moved on to 22.11, just, uh, I guess, one week ago, something like this. And uh, I don't manage to get it running, neither with the original hash uh, for, for this package, nor with an updated one. So I was, I and see. LDD tells me it finds all the libraries. So I was wondering uh, what's wrong. And I, I guess it could be something uh, impure probably the graphic uh, yeah. card uh, or something like this but uh, i'm no expert yeah <laughs> okay so i think i don't immediately have any idea what this could be um there are many changes uh, from one nexus version to another and there could be many things that broke this um, but a very generic way to figure this out and we're gonna try this out here is to do a a um, git uh, bisection, uh, which essentially allows you to uh, give one commit, give another commit. In the first one, it worked. In the second one, it didn't. And uh, you can essentially automatically figure out where it broke. Um, and so with next packages, that works really nice uh, because uh, next packages is, 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 is very pure. Well, next is very pure. Uh, from one next package's version, you can pretty much get a reproducible result. And so I'm going to take, uh, let's see, uh, I'm going to copy your expression here. Well, I, I don't want to like fully run it. Maybe we should have a simpler example. Uh, actually, yeah, let's, 
let's go into lock here and take a look at some some fix here. Um, fix cross compiling. Uh, fix build JDK. JDK might be a bit big. TensorFlow as well. Deep either. Um, maybe, maybe this. Ah, uh, sure. Let's try it out. So, let's go back to uh, let's say like Git um, checkout release. Uh, oh, by the way, two two things. Uh, there's two kinds of release branches in Nix packages. One of them are the release ones, release dash, and then the release number. These are the branches where you push new changes uh, to the releases. Um, so these are modifiable by people, and people can push to them, and, and CI uh, builds them. Um, but then after they have been built by Hydra, um, and a new channel gets released, it's the Nexus release branches that get updated. So if you want a uh, a version that only, uh, if you want a branch that only updates when all the checks have been run, uh, you want to use the Nexus ones. If you want to push changes to a branch, use the release ones. But yeah, let's check out the release, uh, the previous one. So 21.11 has just been released. Uh, let's go to the previous one, 22.05. And let's try building the beaver here. This might actually work. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this did. This does work. Um, so let's go to, um, well, we could try checking out 11 and go like a thousand commits back. So this is Git syntax for taking this release, but going a thousand commits before that or not. Oh, is it this? No, I thought this was it. Let's go here. No, that's definitely indeed, definitely not right. This works. OK. So next build dbeaver here. Um, let's see. That actually still works. I'm surprised. Let's try out this on master. Nope, that also works. Just trying to find a failure here. Okay, this this fails. All right, so we see that um, it doesn't get the binary from uh, the Hydra cache. Yeah, and uh, the build most likely fails here. Uh, so once, so right, we we have now one version here that doesn't work. That's uh, this this commit here, and we have a version that does work. Uh, that is the Release uh, next was uh, 2205. Yeah. And so now we can do a bisection. Um, so to do this, we can uh, do git bisect, uh, let's see, start. All right. Now you start a bisection. Git now wants to have a bad and a good commit. So we do git bisect. Um, we're currently on head. We're going to mark this as the bad commit. All right. Now it's waiting for a good commit. We're going to check out NixOS 2205. All right. I just let's just verify it does build here. And that seems to be the case. It fetches everything from the cache. Now we can say git bisect, good. Now what git's going to do, it's going to run some algorithm to figure out what commits you need to test to, to get an intermediate state. And then it, it does a bisection from there. Uh, and with next packages, we can just run our build again to figure out whether it succeeds here or not. Um, so here, it succeeds again. 
Uh, now there is actually a, I believe there is a project called next build uncached. I think that might be it. I've never tried this out myself actually, but I believe it speeds this up where here we're always waiting for, uh, well, we, we know it succeeds already because it fetches it from the cache. So it, there's really no point for us waiting for it to finish. And I believe next build uncached, let's take a look here. Oh, it just points us to the next build man page. I guess it's an alias, but let's try doing it here. Um, dbeaver. dbeaver, oh yeah, that succeeded very fast. And uh, exit code is zero. Okay, that's nice. Uh, all right, so we know it works here, so we can do a git basic good and let git continue to its algorithm. I believe initially it first needs to test some merge commits, and now it looks like it goes into actual bisection mode, which takes a bit longer. And it's nice, it tells us here how many steps need to be tested. Okay, now we, we could do this all manually, uh, but there is also git bisect run, which you can use to just run a command and it's gonna mark it automatically as good if the command succeeds and automatically mark it as bad if the command fails. Uh, so here we can try next build uncached dash a d beaver. Uh, yeah, gonna try that. Um, let's see here. Okay, it needs to actually build something now. Uh, next build uncached apparently also uses the new style CLI, so we get some nice benchmarks here. Yeah. Yeah, I guess in my case, uh, I I don't have a, uh, like the all the binaries in in Nix packages because the binaries that is downloaded on the fly is is not there, is not inside there. Yeah, yeah, um, it and, is. Uh, and I guess also the the. Mm, Graphic card libraries are probably impure in the packages, so I would have to need to build a new NixOS instance every time. Yeah, I, that's. I, I guess. Yeah, that's true. I um, so it is. This way is very generic. Uh, which is nice. So you could also do that. Um, and in this case here, uh, it's very fast because, oh, it's building WebKit. That's, that's we kind of don't want to do that, I think. Um, but yeah, so in, in the end here, you will arrive at a commit that you know this commit broke it. And this allows you to essentially then say, uh, you can go to, okay, so let's simulate this here. Um, uh, by the way, there is also git bisect skip. Uh, this is often useful if you have a commit that's not built by CI and you don't really want to wait around to, to for it to build. Mm -hmm. uh, but it does, uh, if you do too many git bisect skips, git won't really know which commit broke uh, the, the package, uh, but it is useful sometimes. Um, but yeah, in the end, you will get to a single commit uh let's let's put this in the background here uh, so in the end it will say something like this commit broke the command and then you will be able to take this and that's i frequently do this uh, let me switch to firefox uh, with this commit you'll be able to go to next packages and there's well, you can also, I believe there's a way to find this in other ways, but you can go to commit slash the commit hash. And in here, you can see the specific commit, what it did, but you can also click on the PR here. The, the commits on GitHub link back to the PR. And 
you can post a comment here and know who did it, um, see if there were, was any discussion, if something perhaps broke intentionally or so. Uh, so that is very nice. To, but yeah, to, sometimes it's, uh, right, you need to build a, an entire Nexo system, which might be in some way impure or um, it, it's but a bit more than just running a Nix build. For this, you could use a VM. So uh, let's just try building a Nexus VM here locally in the shell. So we're going to create a simple configuration.nix. Let's start with just an empty attribute set. That's also a valid Nexus module. Ooh. Oh, it just wants us to finish the get by sec, but that's fine. Uh, so simple Nexus module, we're not going to add anything for now. And so we can use Nexus rebuild to build a VM from this. To do this, we're going to run uh, build VM. Then we can provide a, we need to provide the configuration.next with dash i Nexus config. Usually this is on the next path. So if I were to echo next path here. You can see that uh, my Nexus configuration points to this file by default, but I want to overwrite this. I want to build from this local configuration.next file that I have here. And so I'm going to do build vm i nexus config equals, and now the, I believe, dot slash configuration, or maybe even configuration.next works. All right. And I wonder, oh, actually, that's a bit weird. Uh, it still used this here. Um, configuration of next. Oh, it might be checking. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm reverting on the Nexus rebuild. That's a bit, <laughs> that's a bit too much magic for me. Nexus rebuild is actually a shell script, which you can look at directly like this, just Vim and the path to Nexus rebuild. And um, yeah, it does it does a bunch of extra things underneath and it's not hugely complicated, but um, yeah, I'd, we don't really need all the magic here. A, an easier way, in my opinion, to build Nexus uh, is to just run Nix build on the Nexus directory. That's the same as uh, typically this, Nix packages Nexus but local to your current next packages. So we can do a Nexus, I'll make it a bit bigger, Nexus rebuild, next build, Nexus, and then we can pass the configuration like this. You can see from my shell history, I've been doing this uh, a bit more. Um, and yeah, and then to build the VM, we can build dash a VM. We should get an error here. Well, that's a warning. That's fair. Typically, you also always do want to set the state version. Um, oh, I'm actually, oh yeah, no, VMs, we, we don't necessarily have to get an error for this. Um, okay, that works, but I do want to run the VM locally in this terminal here so I can share it with you easily. There is an option for this. Uh, we can go into the QEMU VM module, or actually configuration.nix as well, I think. At least there's a virtualization, virtualization dot, um, graphical. Is there such an option? Ah, not sure. QEMU VM, I know it's in here. Graphical. Oh. What is it? There is a way to turn off the graphical rendering of VMs. Graphics. Oh, it's called graphics. Sure. Virtualization.graphics. Um, so this asks the docs whether to run QEMU with graphics window or no graphics mode. Uh, this is nice. Let's quickly check virtualization.graphics. 
Oh, it is here. I see. All right, so let's do virtualization.graphics equals false. I do believe this will get an error because by default, this option isn't available to just a normal Nexus module. Yep. So we need to actually add imports and then um, let's do it the uh, pure and flight compatible way. Modules path. No, modules path always points to uh, next packages and Nexus modules. That's where all the Nexus modules are rooted at. And this way you can refer to a specific one under that. Uh, I'm going to benefit from auto completion here just briefly. Modules, uh, and then I believe it's. Uh, what is it? Vir virtualization. Yeah. Virtualization, QEMU VM. All right, now again, I'm going to copy this path into here. Uh, don't forget to add the slash here. Actually, is it needed? It might not be needed actually here. All right, let's 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 try this. OK, we forgot to put the dot, dot, dot here. The modules are called with a whole bunch of arguments. Oh, and we do need a slash here. Good to know. All right, building that. We don't get a warning anymore. And it builds the system. Oh, and actually, the I know the manual build takes quite a bit of time. Oh, I guess not. Um, all right, so now we have this. Uh, the result is in the dot slash result. We can now run the VM like this. And it works very nice. Now we don't have any configuration on this machine yet. So actually, if I try to like log in here, I, I wouldn't even know what what the password is. We didn't even we didn't even set a password. So to actually make a VM usable, we need some very basic user configuration. And also it would be nice to have it automatically log us in. Um, what is it? Now to get out of this. Uh, there's a there's a shortcut, but I forgot about it. <laughs> let me let me kill it in the other terminal. All right. Oh, and my terminal is messed up. If that happens, run a reset. I just did that, but you can see the the characters. Um, yeah, that resets it. So yeah, we want some basic user configuration here to make it usable. We can go into, let's check modules, Nexus modules, profiles, um, profiles, yeah, demo. So when you install Nexus via, or if you boot Nexus from a, from a disk downloaded from online, like an ISO image, it has some very basic, uh, modules installed and one of them is demo and in here there is a demo user uh, there's also a display manager installed that automatically locks you in um, we could copy that i do think there's actually a better one though and the installer cd dvd um let's do users dot access Is it this uh, graphical channel ISO image? No. There is somewhere a, a minimal Nexus user that should automatically log in. Oh, here, I think it might be this one. Just going to copy some very basic configuration from here. Yeah, this looks pretty good. So we have a, a Nexus user declared, it's a normal user. We have an empty password. It also sets the root password to an empty string. Uh, this here enables sudo and that 
real users don't have to use a password. And we also have a automatic login for the terminal. So I'm gonna copy this here. All right, copied into my configuration.next. Let's fix the indentation. And yeah, let's try this again. Next build, oh, uh, we don't have make default. We don't really need this anyways. Let's get rid of this or let's let's make it proper. Let's add a lib in front and add lib at the start here. All right, build the VM again. And let's try running it. Ideally, it should automatically log us in. All right, nice. So yeah, this is a Nexus system in a VM now. Uh, now, of course, if you want to test Firefox, you can't do this here. This is a non-graphical one. Um, but yeah, you can also run the graphical one. It will start a QEMU window separately. And uh, yeah. Um, yeah, now here you could run the whatever you need to test whether your package still works or what yeah. broke it. Yeah, yeah, that's very useful. So one question is, what about the graphic card used inside the VM? Is, uh... Oh, that's a good question. Um, I do believe there might be some pass through happening, but I, I honestly don't. Don't know. That's mm -hmm. that's beyond my knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, what is? Yeah, I can't. I can't figure out the key command to access this. Ah, uh, yeah. So, I guess depending on if you have, right? You said that there's like local binary running that. Uh, that uses the local graphics card and drivers? Yeah, it, it uses the libgl uh, library. So mm. it's... Yeah. Um, yeah, so depending on that, it might need extra bits. Uh, if, you, if you can make it work in VM, then that would be a bit of more isolation which doesn't require switching your entire system. Yeah, yeah, that, but that if, would be great. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If uh, if you can't make that work, um, then um, you can still switch your entire system, uh, which would then be a bit more annoying to do, to be honest. Uh, but these is these issues, especially if they will involve like graphics drivers and um, having to run binaries uh, from the internet and and patching those. Uh, they are really hard to debug, uh, and and so uh, as as long as you have any approach possible, you have a way to figure out what broke it. Um, yeah, I can maybe also. So you mentioned patch elf earlier. Patch elf. Did you use patch elf manually, or did you put it in like a a, a next build? No, I put it in a next build. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, patch elf is very useful. Um, it can patch binaries. Let's let's just try. So, by the way, small small tip. Uh, so next shell dash p. Usually you have to give it the list of packages, but you can also just pass it no list at all. And this. Well, I'm in a. I have next shell alias to next to c shell. And this gives you a shell with just the basic STDN utilities in it, including patch elf. Hmm. Uh, patch elf and um, I don't know what it said, make, and so on. Um, yeah, and so patch elf allows you to, to do a bunch of things here. Um, set interpreter. Uh, there's a lot of examples, as always, in next packages. So we can go in here, we can look at patch elf calls. Uh, and you can orient yourselves on those. But there is also a, a nice function that is auto, auto, auto 
patch elf hook. Yes. So auto patch elf hook. Um, I actually want to look at the documentation. I'm going to reorder my windows here a bit so I don't need to continuously switch these. All right, let's look at the next packages manual. Patch, uh, auto patch elf hook. It is documented. That's nice. So auto package patch elf hook runs, I believe, towards the end of your package build in uh, stdn make derivation. Well, if you add it to the native build inputs or, na or build inputs, and it's going to essentially go through the binaries you have installed, figure out whether there's any missing dependencies of those. So it's gonna run, gonna run LLD, I believe. Uh, well, it doesn't say here, uh, but yeah, it's gonna run LLD, see if there's any bind uh, libraries missing and add those using patch elf. I do also see there's some uh, useful flags here, like runtime dependencies, unconditionally added. Yeah, Simonas. Uh, question about so it's all it's interpreter plus those R path stuff, right? Uh, those libraries uh, that auto patch help hook does. Uh, yes. Um, and sometimes uh, that library is available in many other packages. Like, like, uh, uh, does it, uh, like, does it pick just first from the list? Uh, ah, you mean so? If you have, um, well, let's look at like odd patch elf hook here. Patch elf hook. So you mean when we have like here. And uh, well, there's actually no <laughs> libraries passed here. But so when you have like libraries and build inputs, uh, like like this. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So you you kind of then need to select a proper proper package that contains that library, right? Uh... Yeah. Uh, we can also try this out here. So uh, let's try. Let's try removing the. What does this do? Oh, it's oh, that's a require file. Um, require file is an interesting function because uh, it, when we try to run this, uh, let's see, everspace, everspace, it's gonna error. Ah, oh, well, actually, allow unfree. Our config. Oh, unfree is true. Yeah, it's going to tell us to to download the the file manually and then add it, so we can actually test this out here. Uh, but let's try another example. Rune bridge. That might work. So let's try building rune bridge. Now also unfree. Allow unfree is true. All right, downloading a binary. And yeah, we I think that's yeah, so we can see auto patch elf hook running here. And there's some nice debug output here. So lips, these are apparently all the libraries it has. Probably searching for dependencies, setting interpreter, lib a sound found this. Yeah. And so I believe if we were to go in here and remove a dependency, which is needed, uh, probably, yeah, lib a sound comes from also lib and try to build this, I believe it should fail and give you an error that something is missing. Yes. So the error here is auto patch elf could not satisfy this dependency lib a sound plus 2 wanted by this uh, 
dynamic library. Um, yeah, and so this is really nice. You'll be able to see directly what is missing. Uh, I guess now oftentimes the problem then is where is actually that file located? Uh, you might go, well, is there a lib a sound? There might actually be, uh, or is there a sound? No, there is not. And a very good project for this is Nix index, which I actually don't even have installed here. Uh, so let's give it a try. Nix index is kind of the, the successor to uh, file not found in um, Nix package, uh, Nix packages, yeah. So let's try it out, Nix index. Next index comes with two binaries. There's a next index, which creates an index that links you from, uh, well, it goes through all the packages and it creates an index which files each package contains. Uh, let's try the help page here. Next index, we have a database, there's a default and we give it a path to next packages. I do want to make sure I have a next packages version that actually builds. Let's go on um, master here. Let's go to nixos 22.11. Let's also pull the latest updates. And I'm also going to Git bisect, what is it, abort, uh, reset, I believe. Reset hat, reset hat so it doesn't change the branch underneath me. Um, and let's try next index again. So next index, now we need to give it a file to, file path to next packages and we're gonna use the local directory, but you could also do this. All right, now this, I kind of don't want to let it run for all the uh, like entirely. It's uh, a bit slow. I believe it might take like 10 minutes or so. And um, afterwards, let's go into a separate terminal here. Nix index afterwards, you will, you'll be able to use Nix locate, which is the other binary provided by Nix index to figure out which derivations provide certain files. Um, so here are some examples. Uh, if you want to find which binary, which package contains uh, in Firefox, it's going to list those using that command. Um, apparently some limitations. There's also some useful flags. Hopefully I can show this after this is done. Uh, let's also briefly check the read me here i believe there have been people kind of publishing an index of this somewhere can't really remember where that was or if that even happened Let's see issues online version that would be nice oh here this is it next index database Updated last month. It's weekly updated. Okay. This is nice. I've never used this myself before. Let's see how long this takes. So yeah, um, the output is a bit messy if you recess the terminal, but it's checking which binaries are in the path. So actually Hydra publishes the file listing for each derivation it builds so that next index doesn't need to download all of the binaries and all of the derivations. That's nice. Now let's see if, if we can make this work here. We get releases download. Um, sure, let's, let's just copy this. That sounds fine. I hope this also works in Z shell. Nope. Well, let's, let's quickly create a, a bash file. It just completed all the 
uh, this doesn't take comments. But... Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, bash script.shell. And that supposedly worked. And it put it in my next index here. So we don't need to let this run. This is nice. Now let's try next locate. Uh, and let's do open Firefox. Let's try the example from earlier. Oh, um, I guess it didn't like how I updated the database in two places at the same time. So now that I stopped this, let me run the script again. I hope that fixes it. Nope. OK, let me remove the cache then. All right, next locate, Firefox. OK, that's nice. Let's resize this a tiny bit. Uh, I guess it's fine. So yeah, it shows you all the attribute paths where the binary is located. Sometimes there's too many results. But if we go back to the example from earlier, the Ruin Bridge one, let's see which which file it needed here. Oh, we did undid the changes. Let's try this again. And it didn't find the libasound.so.2. So now let's copy that string. Let's run next locate. Uh, let's go here. Next locate libasound.so.2. Now we have too many, too many results. That's sometimes a problem with next locate. But most of these are in these parentheses. I believe that means it's not a it's a dependency of this attribute. Uh, uh, probably something like that. In any case, we can filter those out with top level, top dash level, and that reduced our options to just two, which are actually just the same. Uh, so that's nice. And now we know that the libA sound comes from Elsa lib, which I think we also had originally in here. Yeah, Elsa lib. Uh, this is also a good example because it did show us Elsa lib with uppercase letters here. Let's try adding that and see what happens. You misspelled it with Elsa lib. Oh. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> Elsa lib, thanks. Let's try building that undefined variable Elsa lib. I believe that might be cast by an alias that was removed. Do I need to add an argument? Oh, that's that's true. Thanks. Elsa lib. And that did work. However, uh, once you run, uh, once you made a PR with this, I believe it wouldn't work anymore because as far as I know, CI runs with this config, with allow aliases equals false. So let's try simulating this here. Allow aliases equals false. And then we get a failure again. Uh, this is nice here. It does suggest Elsa dash lib instead. So that's cool. And we can fix this here. Use Elsa dash lib instead. <laughs> there is also next locate um, let's, next index next locate also has I think a useful option is whole name that is some, sometimes useful regex uh, minimal I think whole name is sometimes useful when you don't want the match to be nested somewhere. Uh, but yeah, next index can very much recommend. There is also some integration into your shell so that when you run some binary that doesn't exist, it would automatically suggest you the right one. 
Um, there is also a some other integration for that, but Nix index is one I think works a bit better. And I believe that is documented in the no, it's here. I believe that is documented somewhere in here. Oh, here it's called command not found dot shell. Uh, let's see, command not found. Is there any docs for this? Yeah, here. Next index provides a command not found script that can print for you the attribute path of unfound commands in your shell. You can either search this or you can use the following in home manager. Uh, let's actually try this out. So command not found, we just want to source this and it's in the next index package. Um, also, a sometimes very useful thing is when you want to just run a command with this, but this of course uses next syntax here. We can't just run this in the shell. Uh, if we try to copy this here, it would of course fail. But we can essentially do this by replacing this with a kind of bash uh, what do you call substitution here and calling next build in here. So next build, uh, I'm also going to call no outlink. This makes it not create a result symlink because next build by default outputs the path to the build binary or to the build derivation. So no outlink. I'm going to pass the set I want to build from, next packages, and then dash A for the attribute. If we just echo that, we can see it returns the full path here. Now we can also just source this. Source. Oh, uh, no such file or directory. That's not great. Let's see, let's tree this here. Oh, and uh, yeah, it indeed changed. So the, the readme might be out of date a bit there. So let's fix this, provel.d. All right. And now if I try to run, uh, let's see, I know comma is, yeah. Uh, comma actually kind of takes care of the same thing as far as I know. Um, but yeah, this is uh, command not found doing its thing to tell me how to run it right here. And uh, yeah, let's actually try this out. And the next shell dash b comma, uh, comma dot out isn't really necessary. Dash comma. And now we can actually also use comma, which is a, it's a kind of weird command, but it is useful and kind of does the same thing. Um, so we could also do comma. Well, now we need a new cam command that doesn't exist already. Uh, I guess let's, let's try Minecraft. I haven't installed Minecraft here and I just thought of it. Or launcher, I guess. I believe it works something like this. Oh, no match. Uh, is it just this? No match. Okay. Yeah, that didn't work. It might not work because Minecraft isn't built by Hydra or something. Ah, uh, yeah, but uh, if you're interested in come as well. Thrive receive. What? Thrive receive or something. What, free sieve? Yeah, free civilization. Uh... Oh, it, yeah, I feel like that, like where? This? I think no, yeah. Receive two. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe not. But let's, yeah, comma. Let's see. Can I quickly find it here? Nix um, command not found. Comma in Nix community. Yes, yeah, so if you want to know more about this, uh, yeah. Combination of next index and next shell. Stick a comma in front of a command to run it from whatever location it happens to occupy in next packages without really thinking about it. I think it oh, was here. either uh, inspired or open source by the Shopify guy. I think inspired by the 
their video. I see. Yeah. And so, yeah, it does work. That, that's a nice example here. I can also see that it gives you multiple uh, possibilities when there's not just a single one. All right. And I could also briefly mention, we have a couple more minutes. Uh, traditionally, the command not found has been provided by a, I think like packages file in the channels. So if we go to channels.nexus.org, oh, this looks interesting. Uh, it should still be here. Let's go to like Nexus unstable. And I believe it's this here. Packages.json.brötli. <laughs> Not sure about the pronunciation, uh, but let's copy that file path. Let's w get this. All right, let's uh, unpack this. Uh, I'm going to use a tool dash x, which is like a generic unpacking tool. Uh, well, from an unknown, I probably need to install. You could use comma. Unpacker. I could, um, except I don't know the commands. Oh, it's just this. So, there's D file. as usual. Yeah, dash D. All right, packages.json. I wonder if it's well formatted. Okay, this is taking too long. Let's do cat packages.json. Okay, it's not. So we want well one hundred eggs. So we probably want yeah. to add or something. There is J J tree J S some tree. There was some package to to make this nicer. Uh, in any case, this. I believe this is something that kind of gets you the same thing in the channels. So there is what what things are contained in here. There's meta, there's pioneers, there's platforms. Um, I believe there should also be a kind of listing of binaries that these contain. Uh, I can't really find it here. Uh, but yeah, there exists some built-in integration for Nexus, which does the command not found here. You can look at the, the source of this here. So this is what the programs.command not found option does. Uh, it also provides a database path here. And apparently, it's that was the wrong file. It's programs.sqlite. But this programs.sqlite is kind of very special because only the Hydra channel creation script actually creates this file along with uh, when the published when the channel is published. And so if you just fetch next packages from GitHub, this file won't exist and uh, this command not found here won't work. Um, and so this is why it's kind of a not super uh, it doesn't have a bright future because with flakes, we aren't fetching from the channels anymore. Um, but this is one of the main things that kind of broke with the transition from uh, channels to, to flakes or is going to break. Um, yeah, uh, we could also maybe briefly take a look at this. So we now at least know the right package here. It's not in here. It's in nixexports.exe. Yeah. Oh, my Vim is just frozen here. Nixexports is kind of the main Nix packages repository download from the channels. So let's try unpacking this. This is what the Nix channel command essentially does underneath. Let's go into 
their unpacked result. And oh yeah, we can see here programs.sqlite just kind of injected into the source code, which is a bit weird, but um, yeah, that's how it works. SQLite, uh, let's quickly take a look at this and the schema. Let's do select. I guess we could do like very manual, a very manual query here from programs. Yeah. So this, I believe, yeah, just contains a mapping from uh, like which package contains which binary. So it's a bit more limited than NixIndex. Uh, generally, I'd recommend using NixIndex nowadays. Uh, but if you have channels working already, then the, the command not found options are kind of less hassle to set up. Yeah. Uh, we are just about out of time, but do we have any questions about the, the things I just showed? Um, um, very useful stuff. Oh, sorry. I was saying the same, so it was very, very useful to me. Uh, but I had actually, maybe for me, it would be helpful if you could give uh, two words uh, uh, about uh, what's, what uh, is there in XOS, which is impure apart from the graphic card, because, uh, or let's say the driver from, for the graphic card, because I had no idea that this was impure. So it was, uh, well, I, I discovered along the way, but it makes sense, right? Once you think about it, but maybe is there other it's, stuff which is impure that? Uh, yeah, so it's, well, it's it's really hard to define purity for NixOS. Uh, so it does provide, so like, for example, you don't have a slash lib. Um, that's one way in which it kind of ensures purity that binaries can not just run on Nexus, just like that. Um, but then there's, of course, necessary impurities like the, the graphics drivers. Well, not, not necessary, I'd say. Um, well, kind of necessary because each machine is, of course, different, but we all expect to be able to run the same things and the, for graphical applications to work. Um, compared to... So, so Nixus in general uh, is, is also very much impure in the, the bootloader. So if we go to like boot grub, uh, oh, uh, so boot grub that contains the bootloader and the bootloader is kind of, it contains all the Nixus generations. It's kind of not something that uh Nix kind of integrates super nicely with because it's the thing that comes up first when you boot up the system and it, it allows you to select different versions. Um, and the bootloader needs to, depending on the system, it needs to work a bit differently. It needs to install to different disks. And all of these are impurities, um, which uh, ideally are, are abstracted over, but can sometimes leak in. So I, I feel like next time we can maybe look at purity in more generally in Nix, which has much more kind of clear semantics, what it means. Uh, for Nixus systems, it's, it's kind of hard to define and there's no kind of accepted definition of purity, I'd say. I see, yeah. Thanks, yeah, yeah, very, very useful. If you still have like a couple of seconds, like I wanted to ask, there was somewhere uh, a website where you can check if the pack to which package, to which branch package already made it. Oh, I do know which one you mean. I. No, I thought maybe you will have something out the, at the top of, out of your head, but. Yeah, no, I. I know which one you mean, but I, I can't okay. immediately find it. I yeah, okay, it's... never mind. I will find it then. So. It's nixpk.js. Nixpk.js. At least I think that's the one I used. Oh. At some point. Oh, yeah, this one is it. Yeah, yeah, yes. that's the one. Thanks. Nice. 
Yeah, that is a very useful site. Um, yeah, but the URL is here. Uh, thanks a lot, Yuri. Shows it to you like this. All right, but yeah, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining everybody, and uh, have a nice weekend soon. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, thanks a lot. This was great. Thank you.